All right, in today's video, we're going to look at PLTK. Someone asked me to look over this talk. I haven't done any research prior to recording this video, so you're actually going to see how I'm going to do the technical analysis on the chart, but also how I'm going to look over the financial and some prior research, something that I do very quickly just to see if I should be interested in this talk for further researches and due diligence, or I should just dismiss it. And you'll get to see me doing it live on this video, and we'll discuss about all that coming up after the intro. What's up, guys? This is JC, and welcome to the Wealth Engineering channel. It is imperative that we learn how to manage our money, because once we learn how to manage our money, we can take control of our true wealth, which is our time and our freedom. This is exactly why I created the Wealth Engineering School and this channel. We pay attention to everything that is crypto and stock related to find the best place to grow your portfolio. If this is something that interests you, I want you to smash the like button, subscribe and click the bell. To my subscribers, thank you for your support. And if you're new here, welcome to the Wealth Engineering community. I have interesting links in the description below to help you start on your financial education journey. If you want to learn how to invest or start investing in the last three years, make sure you check those links out. You don't want to miss on this. With that said, you came here for the truth. Let's just dive deep into it. All right, guys. So here's the sticker, PLTK, Platica Holding Corporation. Um, so I haven't done this before, but uh, let's go. So the first thing I like to do is, well, look at the chart. And at a glance, this chart is way too early for me to even have enough data to do a proper analysis on a daily chart. So if I understand correctly, this is a company that was listed maybe in January 15th. So it's a company that's been listed on a NASDAQ, but we don't have data. We don't have enough data to do a proper technical analysis on a daily chart. And daily chart is very accurate when it comes to at least uh, for me, I, as an investing strategy, uh, analyzing a chart on the daily chart is the bare minimum. If I'm doing any type of swing trading, like quick trading, I'll look at the hour chart. But if we're talking about investing, then at the minimum, a weekly chart and sometimes three days or even weekly, even monthly charts. These are the long term approach that I do. But since I'm doing an analysis on this company, let's see. So right then and there, I would have actually stopped my search. But let's let's see what else we can learn from this. So the next thing I will do is try to find a little bit about what this company is doing. So I would try to go on Google and search for this information. All right. So I was able to pull up their website and uh, and from their website. OK, so I guess there are a gaming company creating infinite ways to play. OK, OK. Um, so there are gaming companies. Uh, gaming is going to be a big trend in the next decades. So a lot of game stocks will be booming. Now, is this going to be one of them? Uh, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, one thing I like to do is try to understand what they're doing, what they're providing and try to find a competitive advantage, something that other people cannot replicate or cannot replicate very easy. I see that they have pictures about uh, Oculus. So maybe they're doing games there. I don't know. I'm just scouring through their webpage here. They have office all around the world. Okay, cool. But uh, I haven't seen yet that edge that uh, that's really going to get my interest to even look more. They have a section here that says get to know us. So let's see what we can get from that. Um, okay, this number is increasing. We don't... Or over 35 million active users. Okay, that's great. Uh, our story. Let's see what we can. Mm, I don't like the word free to play. As an investor, I like to. <laughs> I like pay to play. <laughs> but maybe they have a different business model. Maybe they're doing ads. Maybe it's free to get enough people on their platforms, and based on the amount of people they have, uh, maybe free is a good way to start. And um, and maybe they find other ways to monetize that game on social media networks. So hmm, that's interesting. So it's it's a gaming platform so for social media. So not necessarily on your phone, but maybe it's a social media like Facebook or what else? Instagram, maybe. I don't know. Uh, shortly after on mobile platform, we were also to or the blah, blah, blah. Um, I don't find I, I want to I want to see the word money. As an, as an investor, I'm kind of greedy. 
Uh, as a new trend of technology continues to disrupt and shape the gaming landscape, our eyes are keenly set on becoming the world's leader provider of casual games entertainment. The thing is, every company has a way to, like, like their vision is to dominate the world, you know? But how are we going to do that? Like, what makes you different? Through our diverse and constant growing portfolio of games, we seek to create the most engaging and beloved entertainment experience in the world. You know what? Like, sure, good. Like, any company can over, can create something like that maybe a couple months from now, a couple years from now, and then can overtake their users. Uh, there needs to be something that can hook them, that makes sure that they always come back. Social media, um, hey, I don't know about that. Uh, but that's what I see here. Based on, let's see if we can get more things. Our values, cut to the chase. We are fast and direct, but I want to see fast and direct towards my money. <laughs> By quickly identifying what's important, we find the most effective way to achieve our goals. Okay, that's not really cut and direct. Uh, sure everything okay i'm not seeing anything really that uh that really getting me so i see that they've been active for a while since 2010 founded Thetica. so they're basically acquiring companies and games i don't know if they develop these games like do they actually have developers creating these games or are they actually buying these games that's an important uh, that's definitely a question that I would start writing down. And then when I do my due diligence, trying to f answer that question, because that makes a huge difference into their capabilities, into um, what do they own versus uh, if they keep buying games like this, they're just going to increase a lot of their expenses and assets. And But anyway, that's from my two cents. That's what I get from now. Uh, played, But from the website, I'm not really hooked. I see that uh, there are gaming companies. Gaming companies, you know, is definitely a trend to follow as an investor, but I need more than that. So since we don't have enough data on the chart, what we'll do is the next step after that, once I have an idea what the company is doing, I'm actually going on the financial statements. And I love to use uh, TradingView for that because I can have the chart right here. And I also have the financial statement right here. So it's kind of like all in one. And... Um, First thing I'll do is I'll look at the income statement. Let's see. All right. Well, they're actually they're actually making money, and they're making money in the billions. That's good. That's good. So wait a second. How much are they worth? Market capitalization in eleven point nine billion. So basically twelve billion dollars. Uh, how many shares? Total outstanding shares, 400 millions. All right. So they are, they are a big shot. They are a big shot in terms of, uh, in terms of market capitalization. And it, of course, if the company's stock increases, then that market capitalization will increase as well. What the market capitalization is, it's basically the price of the stock or share times the amount of share uh, in the market. So... That would give you 11.9 billion. Now, the other thing I like to see is their price to earning ratio. Um, this this is high. This is very high. Uh, this is very very high. Uh, and I like to have a numbers between 10 and 20. That's when I know the company is very low value, and then I can get in. Uh, also, the other thing I like to look first is the income statement as well. So. Um, the income statement, I see that they have revenue. I got sidetracked because I wanted to understand how come they had a billion dollars. But also what I now want to do is find their net income. And the fact that this number is not negative already is impressive. And also what I love to do is look at their total operating expenses. And that number is in a billion as well. And one of the reasons why I really like TradingView to do this work is because they also provide a visual way to see the trend. And me, I'm a very visual person. If you click on this, you can add new data and remove data. So what I do is I look at the revenue, I look at the income, and I look at the expenses. And I, so what I like to see, you can see it very easily. You can see that every year their incomes and revenue has been increasing and their expenses are also increasing. 
I like to see that when the revenue is higher than the expenses, what worries me is that for them to grow is that they need a lot more expenses and their software companies shouldn't cost that much, but their, their expenses are very high, even higher, even uh, more than half of what the revenue is. So that they're still in profit, but you can see that the profits are inconsistent. Some year it's low, some year it's high, and then this year is high, and then this year is low again. So it's not really consistent. I like to have a nice clean pattern that says they're incomes are growing and their expenses are decreasing but it seems that their increase expenses are increasing as they grow bigger um, and that's interesting so the next step after that is look at their balance sheet now okay so i look at the balance sheet and this is a turn off right away i see that their total assets is in a billion that's great but the liabilities look at that look at that 3.1 billion dollars uh, what i would love to see is uh, how much has this been going on over the last couple of years? Maybe we can put it in quarterly and get some ideas. No, we don't have enough data for that. But uh, quarter 19, 3.1 billion. Quarter 2020, 3.1 billion. Uh, quarter 3, 2020, 2.3 billion. This is a lot. This is a lot. This is a lot of liabilities. Um, in the billions, I think it's even more than the revenue, right? No, it's not like it make any. Yeah, so I don't. This doesn't make me feel comfortable at all as an investor. When I'm looking at this, and what I love to do is whether we're talking about swing trading, day trading, or even investing, I love to look at these fundamentals, make sure that they're all right, and then I would decide which trading strategy I would apply for them. But when these are not actually good uh, for me and the market cap is so high this is the other turn off remember i was telling you guys i love to invest in companies where the market caps are like kind of like in the low millions or even like 50 million 100 millions and companies that i know can at least double my money and also have that potential to 10x that way Worst case scenario, I still get double of my money. And best case scenario, I get a 10x. These, uh, for this company to 10x on this current price right now, they would have to reach like $100 billion market cap. And I don't see a way that this market can achieve this. Not from free games and that uh, they're acquiring and expanding, especially with such expenses. So this is my big sense on uh, on what I think about this company right here it was a fun exercise to do definitely for sure going back on the chart now for someone who would some who someone who think differently than me and would like to invest in it as well what i would do is i would definitely wait to hear and see more of uh, more data on a daily chart so that the rsi can at least record enough information then what I would love to see is, hey, I would love to see kind of like the price settling. On the hour chart, you can see that the price is settling on this line right here, around $28. Maybe the market is settling on this price as the new normal for this company. To them, it's just what it's worth. Uh, again, I would still be... Um, but based on what I see right now, I wouldn't even put this on my watch list to go do my due diligence on it. Because it's, uh, it's although that it's on a gaming company, that is a trend that I look for. But uh, the market cap is too high for me. And uh, again, I from a at a glance, I don't see that hook that they have, that, uh, that, that innovative. Uh, I love innovation. And I don't see innovation from, from their websites, from their products so far. Um, the only thing I saw was, hey, they're looking into developing games for social media and people spend a lot of time on social media as well but it's just i don't know it's just something that doesn't and as an investor also you gotta you gotta go with a little bit of your gut feeling where does the gut feeling talk to you about it for me i don't think this is the right investment for me if you have any stocks you want to review write it down on the comment section and i'll take a look at it and make some videos like this just like i'm doing now so that at least you can see my pattern the way i think the way uh uh, and maybe we can find some good ones. Someone else actually refer me a stock and I'll do a video about that as my next video. It's a GEVO. I haven't done any research on this company yet, so it's going to be interesting as well. This today was my first time that I'm actually ever uh, looking into this stock right here. 
But it was a fun exercise and I'm definitely taking a liking about that. So with that said, we'll talk on the next video.